Joseph A. Sabora here, doing another movie review on the account of the Switch Room 2 movie pack. It's going to be vice versa. That's right. This is a story about a young Chicago department store vice president who's also divorced, but he's the father of an 11 year old boy who's into music and he's at uh, elementary school. But then, when they decided to spend time over the weekend, they suddenly found an ancient skull that's from a Buddhist monastery that's been stolen by a pair of thieves. And by the time the two had touched them, just so they can wish something about what they want, what else? They switched bodies. Yep, just like the last movie I just reviewed already with Like Father, Like Son, Except the difference is, they used uh, a brain transference serum that they found from, from Trigger that he, that he actually got from his uncle. Yeah, that's how it went for it. Also, I forgot to mention that Vice Versa now has a Blu-ray release from Mill Creek. And I hope Like Father, Like Son suddenly gets one too, so that way we can have both of these films together. Yeah, in fact, that would work together, too, unless I can get them separately. But, but they should have the same transfers, no matter what. Maybe, like, Father Like Son will have a better transfer, too, if they ever put that on Blu-ray. So we'll see. <laughs> and out of the two, Vice Versa is a whole lot better. I mean, even though I like, like Father Like Son, I thought Vice Versa at least was better written. It definitely had a better pace for the film, and on top of that, it definitely had a heart. It had a heart in its right place. And plus, uh, Judge Reinhold and Fred Savage actually worked together as a team. So it, to me, they really brought some chemistry as a father and son. So I thought that really worked, in my opinion. Unfortunately, the film was a bomb at the box office. It didn't do so well. Very sad. And it got mixed reviews from critics, but surprisingly enough, Siskel and Ebert, who actually hated Like Father, Like Son, actually loved this movie even more. And I was a bit surprised. Because I guess now they know the difference between the two. <laughs> And yes, because even Vice Versa has very similarities to Like Father, Like Son. Like, for example, not only about the body switching genre here, but also because they even too have a scene with the concert, bullies, and all of that stuff that has to go for. Yeah, even the conference scene. So, here's some similarities here. <laughs> but instead of using the brain transference serum, it's the... It's the skull. <laughs> I think it works. So, so let's uh, review the film just to keep on going. It stars Judge Reinhold from Beverly Hills Cop along with the sequel and the third movie. He was also in the movie Fast Times at Richmond High and Stripes. Fred Savage from The Boy Who Could Fly, The Princess Bride, and the Wonder Years TV show. And of course he later went on to do films like The Wizard. All come to mind. Uh, Karan Borer. Switzy Kurtz. Yes, Switzy Kurtz from Sisters, the TV series. And Pushing Daisies. All come to mind. And yes, she was in that awful remake of Overboard. David Provel. Jane Kazimerick, yes, if you're familiar with her, she was from, she played the mother in the TV series Malcolm in the Middle. Yep. With uh, Frankie Muniz. Love that show. Uh, she was also in the movie called The Heavenly Kid, which I didn't care for, but you get the idea. Uh, William Prince. Uh, Beverly Archer, yes, from the TV show Mama's Family, where she played Iola. 
Yeah, Thelma's uh, next door neighbor and friend. Uh, Harry Murphy. Uh, Kevin O'Rourke. Richard Kine. Yes, Richard Kine. Who's a very good actor. Um, he also went on to do not only voice acting and stuff, but he was also in the TV show Spin City. You yeah, have Michael J. Fox. He's done a lot of stuff. Uh, he was in Clifford. Yeah, the one with uh, Martin Short. And of course, did the voice of Tom in Tom and Jerry the movie. Yeah, go figure. But he got the best he could do. And James Hong. Yep, James Hong from movies like Bit Trouble in Little China. Yep. Blade Runner, The Golden Child, you know, Mulan, All Come to Mind, those movies, even Kung Fu Panda. It's written and produced by Ian LaFrenotz and Dick Clement, which is based on the novel from 1882, yeah, that old, by F. Einstein, of the same title. Yeah, so this is actually their fourth screen adaptation because it actually happened before in the past um, yeah one is from 1916 the other one's 1947 and finally 1948 yeah and it's directed by Brian Gilbert the same director who later went on to do the film Not Without My Daughter the drama with Sally Field and Alfred Berlinda which is a very good film by the way in my opinion the movie begins where we meet the vice president of a Chicago department store in Chicago, Illinois, named Marshall Seymour, who's played by Judge Reinhold, who's in charge of buying and selling many uh, merchandising of electronics, uh, perfume, clothes, and many others. He loves to do whatever he can. He's also divorced, and he has an 11-year-old son named Charlie, who's played by Fred Savage who has um, a little time left over to spend time with him. But he also has a girlfriend named Sam who's played by Corinne Bauer. And they just went on a trip to Thailand just to purchase an exotic merchandise. Which apparently a pair of thieves, which includes Turk, who's played by David Provel, along with his accomplice Lillian Brookmeyer, who's played by Switzy Kurtz, to actually steal an ancient skull from a Buddhist monastery. So, they were there just so they can smuggle it out of the country, so that way they'll make the switch. But when Marshall returns, he takes Charlie for a few days while his mother, Robin, who's played by Jane Casimeric, and his stepfather Cliff, because they were going on vacation. Um, apparently, um, they're spending the entire weekend together, along with Sam, you know, so they can have uh, a fun time, you know, doing something, you know, going out. But the only problem is, you know, Marshall has to work as hard as he can, and on top of that, um, you know, during dinner. Uh, Charlie actually uh, brought in his friend, who's a frog. Yep, brought in a frog yeah, to dinner, and suddenly he ran loose. So that became a disaster. So that wasn't working out for Marshall and Sam and Charlie together. So Charlie just can't understand why his father couldn't be more involved in, in his life. But that is until Charlie suddenly founds the skull that was in the closet and they wound up getting into an argument where how they could wish they could be in each other's bodies so that's when the skull suddenly possesses magical powers to actually express their witches once they touch the skull and that's when their bodies suddenly switch which we begin to notice why Marshall actually has Charlie's clothes on, so that's how it switches. But then suddenly, you know, it grows larger and, and has a shirt and pants all teared up. 
Then we see Charlie wearing his clothes, but unfortunately it's getting a lot bigger for him. But it wasn't torn apart. So. <laughs> also you get to see the, the close-up of their faces too on how they start changing. Like you can see how different their faces start to look. And like like they're two faced here and there. So now they're they both got the switch, so now you know, Charlie's inside uh, Marshall and Marshall is inside Charlie. Yep. Father and son alike. <laughs> so now this is gonna be one of their biggest problems too. Because now um, Marshall has to do something inside Charlie's body where he has to deal with the bullies and, and all this other stuff, not to mention he's a lot smarter than everyone in the class. I mean, he gets to finish his test, but he also makes a phone call to see you know, where Marshall is. And while Marshall, however, going back to his office, he begins to notice how his personality has changed. So now he's beginning to sound exactly like you know, Charlie. <laughs> so he's like he's having a good time. He's having fun. He's just going around you know, trying out the, the crossbow, which he accidentally uh, shot it and, and went straight into the, <laughs> the mannequin. So that caused a, a racket right there. Uh, of course, he has to deal with these... Uh, Three workers, yeah, one of them, of course, played by Richard Kine. Marshall also rides this skateboard and he even wears uh, sneakers <laughs> so he'd be able to move faster and jump high and do whatever he wants. <laughs> yeah, just a kid in all of us. And he brought in his frog, yeah, from Charlie and just decided to uh, give him a drink by putting him in, in the sink. So he's just fooling around with the chair, you know, doing his his actual exercise while even reading a newspaper that has a Transformers comic in there. <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs> Charlie was actually in the limbo with, of course, the the bully. But there's even a moment here where he's just telling the uh, the limo driver to to hurry up and everything and then I'm trying to make a phone call and doing it exactly how Marshall does it yeah but we begin to notice how tough he is and even the limo driver is like saying this because I know the work says he's gonna be popular someday and he says yeah I'm gonna kill him <laughs> yeah just funny but, hey, I mean, as far as fame's concerned, you know, even Marshall actually went inside uh, Charlie's school. That's actually one of the best moments, too, was when he went inside and actually handled all three of the bullies inside the bathroom because they're going around smoking cigarettes and everything. And, <laughs> and that really teaches him a lesson, acting like he's a cop. <laughs> like he was going to arrest him, but actually he was just going to teach them a lesson. They actually push him into the uh, the bathroom stalls, you know, where the toilet seats are. So yes, he got even with those guys. And on top of that, he actually was sent to um, the principal's office because apparently, which I know um, that one scene, Charlie actually uh, stood up to those bullies. And, well, of course, Marshall inside him, just to help out. Uh, the little girl because you know they still suffer from her so apparently uh, the girl actually uh, gave him a note of the teacher named uh, named Jane uh, Laurel who's played by Beverly Archer suddenly found out the note and begins to find out that well <laughs> Charlie has a crush on her well a teacher's crush I guess and this is the moment when <laughs> Marshall inside Charlie's body begin to find out about this and suddenly says, No way!
That was just funny. As we get back to the thieves, uh, Turk and and Lillian, they, they try to find a way to go after Marshall and Charlie to find the skull. So that way they'll be able to pick it up for business. Because Lillian suddenly came to uh, Marshall's office just so he can f they can find the skull. Giving them a fret. Because now they're going into bigger trouble because the president uh, of the department store actually wanted him to to go on a board meeting to find out about the toys that they're selling including the the moose that was having some problems but apparently Marshall just wants to keep one so maybe he'll give it to his son um, also there was even times when uh, Marshall actually gets a chance to take Sam to a, a concert since Charlie couldn't go so that way he can get the autograph by uh, by a rock band named Malice. So, so that that really was a treat for him. And yes, there's even moments here where <laughs> where Charlie suddenly drinks uh, martinis. Yeah, Robin suddenly came in and begins to find out about that, and that was really messed up. But yes, he was drinking martinis. Yeah, well, in in his thoughts, you know, he was talking about how he felt when he was young, you know, the, the probably the best times of his life, you know, where he gets, where he was into the Beatles and all of that, going around. <laughs> it's kind of weird for Fred Savage uh, in his age to actually talk about all that, but that's just really something. <laughs> uh, okay, but back to that, uh, Turk and Lillian suddenly holds, uh, Marshall for ransom, so he kidnaps Charlie so they can grab the skull. It leads to a, a board meeting that was going around, which that's why they started to wear these um, one of those Rocky Talkies that they have. So they put it, they put the mic in uh, Marshall, so Charlie's telling them what to say, you know, to all the bosses around and, and all the workers, and. That's exactly what was going to happen next before Marshall just comes over just to take the, the ransom and be able to send him to those two thieves, Turk and Lillian. And this is where it gets to a chase scene all the way through the train station. And this is where, by the time they got the skull, you know, by this is where um, Charlie suddenly steals a police motorcycle. And, <laughs> and Marshall came in for the ride too, so they, they're just trying to go all the way straight to the train station to go after Turk and Lillian just so they can get the skull back. And yes, this is where we get the scene where both Turk and Lillian suddenly wished and, and they suddenly switched. And that's where you see all their clothes all switched up too. And they're all screaming. And at the end... <laughs> Charlie came and took the skull, saying, We tried to warn you! That sort of thing. So unfortunately, they wound up at the police station, which Marshall was all handcuffed. He was crying. And apparently they're trying to find a way to, to have him unarrested and, and be able to go back to, to spend time. So course uh, so Cliff suddenly um, bailed them out and everything was going great so they they you know they send Turk and Lillian to jail and they took the skull so that way by the next night just when Charlie's being sent back home with his mother Robin and, and Cliff um, Marshall decided to go back you know, just so they can use the uh, the skull so they can switch back to the, to the way they were. So now they can go back to normal as they are so they don't have to end up staying you know <laughs> with Marshall's uh, body going into Charlie and Charlie's body going into to Marshall ever again. <laughs> yeah, but. So yeah, things went back to normal for them and it was really cool. 
So this was considered as a Christmas gift right there. So now uh, Marshall and Sam are together. They're actually getting ready to propose. Maybe they get married. And, and Charlie's actually fine with that too. So it's cool. And I really love this movie. In fact, I love this movie even more than Like Father, Like Son. Even though I do like the film mostly as an actual physical comedy, as we can speak, with Dudley Moore and Kirk Cameron. But this is the better of the two. Because this one actually has a heart to it. And, and unlike the Blaine Transferred Serum that they use in Like Father, Like Son, this one actually has an ancient skull with magical powers. And the special effects were very well done for its time, where we begin to see the switch of the bodies and how the room suddenly gets brighter, um, the sky suddenly gets darker, yeah, the entire city seems like it's, it's going for a solar eclipse, and we begin to see how their faces are starting to change, the clothes are starting to change and switching from one side to the other. And even though they're getting torn, or the other one just getting bigger, <laughs> that was really something. And and the characters were very well written, especially Judge Reinhold and Fred Savage. I mean, it was great to see both of them reacting to each other while their bodies have been switched. I mean, Marshall seems like he's having a, a fun time, like he's already a kid already. I mean, he gets to play the drums inside the department store. And yeah, when he was trying it out, yeah, with the guy, you know, playing the guitar. So it's almost like the scene in, in Big, you know, where Tom Hanks uh, already, as an adult, was just, you know, working at the toy store, suddenly plays the piano, you know, with the boss. And yeah, that was a good moment, but it's right up there, too. Many others, too, that follow uh, between him. So it looked like he was having a good time, just acting like a kid. So he's, he's like, you really miss all that. Um, while uh, Fred Savage, on the other hand, as Charlie, is just basically playing his father, you know, just being tough, sort of uh, start, started to act like a jerk at times. I mean, but hey, that's how <laughs> vice presidents could be sometimes. You know, they, they always had to act tough, you know, buy and sell and or any other. <laughs> Like, he could be uh, sleazy at times, too, yeah. I mean, when you think about it. But nevertheless, um, even though he tries to, to handle the bully, he still gets knocked over. But Marshall seems to have fun, you know, going after them. And many others that follow. He does have a great supporting cast that join in, like Beverly Archer. Uh, even Jane Lynch is in this movie, too in a very small role as Mrs. Lindstrom. Um, even James Hahn too has a small role. And Dave Provell and Switchy Kurtz suddenly steals a lot of roles in this where they just about to go after Marshall and and Charlie just so they can steal the skull. So they're very uh, I mean they're very crazy and but that's how they were going for. It. And the chase team wasn't that bad either. And everything that went for it has a great soundtrack. Um, it has a song by Starship that's at the end of the credits, and there's even the song "The Moni Moni" by Billy Idol, which is actually heard uh, in the scene where Marshall is just checking out his armpits and his hunky body, so he's just looking good while he's shaving. You know, like he's just having a fun time. Uh, also, um, there's even the the concert scenes with the the rock band Malice, and that was a cool song they they actually went for. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It has the energy at its right place. I really love it. So, um, I rec in fact, it had a beautiful direction and and great screenwriting by the two, so you got to give them credit. They really know how to handle things very well. And 
they knew what they were doing. The only issue I had with the film, however, though, was that, yes, there was um, a pretty awkward scene at the end of the movie where... But it makes sense because apparently they don't want their clothes to be ruined. And that's true. So they have to strip their clothes in order to have their body switched so they can go back to normal. So that's why they had to bring their wish. Uh, I, I have to mention it anyway because that's exactly how it went for them. But other than that though, I just wish this movie was a hit at the box office. I mean, that's what it should have been. Mostly because of Fred Savage's stardom as Kevin Arnold in the one year, so this would have helped very well. I think it did okay on home video though, and luckily for me I picked up the, the home video release uh, later on. But now that I have it on DVD, it's really special. So anyway, and of course the score by David Shire is very soothing to, to join in, so it gives it that entertaining um, adventure. So there we go. Um, anyway, I, I highly recommend this movie, it's fun really is. So anyway, I give Vice Versa four and a half stars. Closer to five, but still. <laughs> but anyway, I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.